How's it guys? Uh, Brian Le Pen here, Bash Warehouse, and uh, I've got a very special guest with me today, uh, TJ Faree. Dude, welcome. Thank you. How's it going, you right? yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, obviously, guys, um, some of you might have seen on social media that TJ went out to Albert Falls and caught an absolute slaunch donkey, his new PB, uh, 5.65 kg. Is that correct? Yeah. So that's like 12 and a half pounds there or thereabouts, which uh, certainly a lot bigger than my 514. So, uh, oh. yeah, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of jealousy and envy, I'll be honest. Um, yeah, so, you know, basically, guys, we just had to find out a little bit more from the horse's mouth per se on, on how he did it, what he used, etc., and some tips that we can all use, clearly, because now I'm going to try and get a 566, you know what I'm saying? So, help us, brother, help us. Um, yeah, so fish of a lifetime, still pretty um, unreal feeling and um, honestly, you know, it's, it's a lot of luck, it's, it's hard work throwing the bait right, but it's also confidence, it was, it was literally confidence. Um, people battle with chatterbaits, I've battled with chatterbaits, um, I got this little uh, jackhammer a little while ago, uh, black and blue, not a confidence colour either, but under guidance of what people said online, I got a black and blue. And uh, yeah, we went to Albert's after another very, very big fish came out. Um, hot day. We, um, the day went on, I lost a very big fish earlier in the day. Very sad about that. And uh, we ended up going into the river um, because it was cooler water. Water was 30 degrees all over the dam. We went into, into the river for cooler water. We found cooler water as we moved up, um, as we moved up the river towards the rapids. It was dropping half a degree, degree, half a degree every time we looked and I caught a lot of fish up, up the river on, on the way up and it was, um, I don't know if the, obviously guys who have seen the water clear on the right hand side there's a, there's a ledge, there's a hard clay ledge on the right hand side of the river and it was just pitching the jackhammer onto you right on the edge of that ledge letting it, waiting, letting it fall on the floor, it's only about five foot at the moment I believe and the beauty, once again, and I'll keep repeating this, of the jackhammer, that no, no, and I've gone through a lot of chatterbaits, a lot of brands, a lot of things. <clears throat> there is nothing that can vibrate at that slower speed. I mean, it was snail's pace. So you reckon that's, that's the key when it comes to that, is that slow retrieve and still getting that vibration? Is that what? 100%, that and on top of the noise, this thing, We've seen the videos. It sounds like a buzz bait under the water. It makes that high pitched, we all know that high pitched whistle that irritates the bass. There's, there is a video showcasing it um, with all the Z Man chatterbaits. Um, the noise on this is different, but that's slow. And I, when I say slow, guys, tick tock, tick tock. Like that was, that was key. It's eight fish on the boats approximately up the river. There was a 4.8 pound included in that as well that we didn't I didn't we didn't put a video up it wasn't worth it after the five six five. Um, but but, yeah. it's, but so so it just it wasn't just one fish on the bat. So you're saying that all those fish you were catching in the same kind of technique, pitching it, letting it go down, slow wind, getting the, the blade to vibrate to make a little bit of a sound. Is that just advice for guys that have maybe tried it or want to try it go out and buy it on, on how to fish it on how to get those giants to eat it? Yeah, so, you know, the thing is, like, some people battle with spinnerbait, some people battle with chatterbaits. I battled with chatterbait for a very long time. I just, it wasn't my jam. I just, I didn't like it, I didn't enjoy it. I was a spinnerbait man. So, what I ended up, and guys were catching it. I mean, guys were hammering fish on it. The Americans, the guys in the pro league, you know, you swindle standing up on stage, not sponsored at all and talking about this bait. So, what I needed and what the brain cuts and was get the best and if you don't catch fish you're doing something wrong. That, that was it. So it was going fast, it was going slow, it was going medium, it was ripping it, it was just a couple weeks of figuring this thing out. And before the 565 it was 3.7 um, and spur wing, that's about 7, 8 pound fish. Um, it was, we went to, we had a little informal Ishawi versus Durban kickboat competition in Ishawi. I think I saw I got the longest fish for that on this as well. Um, also, just absolute slow rolling it on the bottom. Something you just can do only with that bait. So, two patterns I'm picking up here is that 
It just seems where, wherever you go, where there's big fish around, yeah. they're eating this bait. Yeah. Okay, so, and, and each time you're mentioning technique-wise, it's you slow rolling it. Yeah. Cast, slow roll, or pitch, slow roll. Triggering those lazy fish. I think, okay. I think that's it. I think it is, it's the, the, the real, the real soft tip, tap, tip, tap. It, it wakes them up. It lets them know there's something coming. They can, they can hear it from the noise. Mm. It's coming past slowly. Yes. And all my bites, except the three, the 3.7s are only one, only big fish that was different. She took it quite violently. Mm. But every other big fish, the bites have, on that slow roll, have been, vibrations gone, strike now. Yeah. Hoover it. <laughs> <laughs> as quickly as you can. Because they are just, it's coming by so slow. They literally, I think they're just going, going. Yeah, the whole, the whole bait just, yeah, inside. just inside. Because it's so slow, it's mm. triggering them with the blade and the sound. Yes. And it works. Perfect. It works. So then tell me about, because I see what you've got here is the black blue color. Okay. And then you've got a Zima and Razor Shad and Green Pumpkin on the back. So, can you explain to me the, why you've gone, gone for that sort of contrast? So, June bug, I still don't, black blue, I still don't know why they like it. I can't, I can't it's, it's the same as when you look at a spinnerbait. Why do these fish eat this thing? I've got no idea. Yeah. Um, the black blue is, you know, if you go on, if you go on online forums, you go read the American forums, you read the South African forums, you, you hear what the guys are saying. Black blue, it works as a standard. The most popular color for jigs worldwide, it works. Hmm. They eat it. We all know what a June bug black blue senko can do, even a June bug fluke. So, with the popular color, to give myself confidence, I've never been a huge green pumpkin fan. It's a surprise I've got a green pumpkin trailer on. Mm. Um, I'm a lure junkie, so I like all the little bits and tricks and things. Yeah. Went with uh, the black blue, the popular color. Took the. Mm. I basically bought myself confidence. Yes. Um, yeah. The green pumpkin trailer, we all know the, the I think it's the Okeechobee craw color, sure. which does very well with uh, the black blue and the uh, green pumpkin mixed into it and the Senkos and things. And just to put a bit of naturalness in it. That, Perfect. That was it. Very, very, very interesting. I can see, besides all the teeth mark on this head here, I can see that you've done something to this blade. Obviously, we know that this black blue jackhammer comes out with a standard black painted blade. And we know that when you catch big fish like that, and you are, when you are winding it through cover, yeah. that blade gets beat up, and it, obviously that paint starts to come off and it starts to shine. So, what have you done to keep this thing blacked out? So yeah, especially off the Alberts, I mean, you, you're pitching into all sorts. You're yeah. pitching into little stumps, there's rocks, you get stuck. It's, it's happening, it's, that's just the deal at Alberts at the moment, because the water's low. So, yeah, the color scratched off. Um, I wanted the black blade. We didn't want the shiny blade. Um, we, yeah. So the the paint started coming off, and there's a there's a marker you can get now. I know the guys say permanent marker, but then you got to put it on at the start of every trip. That's not going to work for me, especially on a kickboat. I don't have everything on my kickboat all the time. So there's another marker. It's actually a paint marker. Which you can use for wood and all sorts of, and steel and all sorts of things outside. It works like a paintbrush. Gets dry. You got to dip it in water. Um, you gotta shake it around a bit, and that, so that color you see on there, that is after a full day's fishing with it. That paint is still holding. Okay. Um, till we find, till there is a guy who jumps up and does resin properly in South Africa, who's got the resin well, I believe it's called, that is a great alternative. Keep so that blade. So that's just, is it just like something you can get at a hardware store, yeah, basically? Yeah, it cost me 18 bucks. So it's some kind of, it's just like a paint? It looks exactly like a permanent marker. Oh, okay. And it just says on the side, paint marker. Paint marker? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So it's obviously very important to you. You've got con super confidence in yeah. this now, so you don't want it to change at all. So you're going to keep that blacked out, and, and that's, your, that's your winning combination there as well. Just, just to give the guys, the guys um, an idea on, on water clarity, uh, was, was clean water running in there? Was it, is it stained? Is it murky? How dirty is it? Um, just so the guys have an idea, you know? So, you know, those colours, obviously the colours say dirty water on, yeah. this, on this jacket. The colours we've chosen, the black blue, it says dirty water. The river was dirty. Oh, really? It was brown. Okay. It was, like I said, I didn't see my fish till it was on the surface. It, I had no clue how, you know, how big it was. I had no clue what it was. First of all, it was, could have been the barbell. <laughs> sure. Because she was just bullying me. You, you look at the video, she just, there was no, there was nothing. I had no signs. Um, possibly just the, the, the few head shakes telling me it was a bass, not as no, not as hectic as the barbell straight down. Okay. Um, so yeah, water clarity, 
it's tried and tested in dirty water. Like 100%, it's tried and tested in stained water at spurring. Okay. It's worked at spurring, it's not as dirty as the river. The water we fished in Ishawi was not, not dirty. It was dark, it was that dark wood stained water. Um, but from what I read online and what other guys have done in front of me, I mean, <coughs> Tyron Portgita showed me the first time when he was hammering them on a black blue, black blue chatterbait at Hazelmere. That water wasn't that dirty. Um, so, you know, what you read online, if you, you know, you go into Bass Resource on the forums and things, the guys say, do not shy away from black, blue and clear water. Mm. And I don't know how true this is. Again, this is, you know, rumors and you talk amongst the guys. When there's bluegill in the water, for example, Craigie Burn, Craigie Burn, it's got a lot of bluegill, so the guys say throw June bug fluke. Well, I mean, if bluegill and June bug fluke matches up, then this color should work in any color water. Sure. It should. Sure. If, that, if that is the thought pattern, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So if you were, you know, like most of us are on a, on a, on a fishing budget and, and you want to try and get yourself a, a big fish and you start talking chatterbaits, what would you re recommend to the guy? So basically, as I understand it, you're saying you made that commitment. So go out and get the best one. Is this a 3 8 ounce or half ounce? Yeah, 3 8 always. So go out, always for you. <laughs> yeah. So a 3 8 ounce, go get yourself a Z-Man jackhammer, a pack of razor sads. I mean, these things will last you. Yeah, it's only one I've put on. <laughs> There's only one? Yeah, it's Not the same as the paddle tail. Use a paddle, Z Man paddle tail for a year. <laughs> so, so go out and get that, and you wait till the race is ready. And then from there, you could obviously tinker and, and have a look at other color models, etc. But I mean, this is going to be obviously with what you've experienced, your, your number one go to. Yeah, I mean, if you talk about cost, you know, this, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a kick boater, and this, this, this is some real talk from a kick boater. This thing is not cheap. It's not. Even in the States, you look at the guys talking on the forums, they're like, is it worth it? You know, the Americans, we come straight from them, they're probably getting it the cheapest in the world. Um, they, they even talk about the price. I'm coming from a kickboat. My kickboat fully rigged up without motor and battery is almost about 5,000 rand. I look at the price of this and I say, eesh, what's my wife going to think? You know, kind of deal. But how much money do I spend on fuel? How much money do I spend on other baits? You know, it's five packets of plastics if you're finding pla if you're finding plastics at 100 rand a packet these days, hmm. and that has that small investment right there has done what I've been trying to achieve for since I started fishing, fish of a lifetime. What everybody tries to. It's true. Um, you know, and like I said. If you're gonna go out there with a, a subpar bait and you're battling, you start questioning your bait. We all done it. We all go in comps, five minutes, five minutes, crank baits off, <laughs> square ball on, you know, kind of deal. When you get the quality baits and you tie it on and you make sure your knots is good, because I have swum for this thing already, I have, and that water wasn't fun. It's not fun. Make sure your knots is good. Test it. Put on a good bait. Get a good bait. It's the same with a spinner bait. You can't go out there with a cheap spinner bait and think, okay, I'm going to learn spinner bait now. You're going you're gonna to doubt your bait. Um, get a good bait. And I'm not saying that this is the only one. Obviously, the elites work. We know the elites work. We know the normal Z-Man, the, the normal, what's the, 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 original. Normal, the original works. And there's a couple of other ones that work. But this thing, there's a reason why every big competition in America, when you look at the roundup and what the guys were using, they are throwing this thing. This weekend's MLA, there were a couple guys throwing and they were catching fish and once you have this bait, yes you've spent the money, you've got the best one. You do. Hands down, this is the best chatter bait. And then if you're not catching fish well, you need to relook really your strategy or your cast. Yeah. And it helps, it helps a lot. I think that's a great, great point. Switching away now, obviously, I mean with that with the fish you're talking about threes and all sorts that you've caught three kilos and whatever and going up to that that pb you caught on this pesca spinnerbait chatterbait rod okay and this is the actual rod that you use for that can you just run us through through your experience obviously with that big fish particularly i mean that is the biggest one we can use as an example i think that is the biggest bass i could be wrong but that i know of that's ever been caught on a Pesca Pro Series rod. So I'd like to, yeah, if you can just give us how did the rod handle up and what did you find and do you enjoy it? Yeah, um, okay, so I've reviewed this rod before. Um, I've got a lot to say about these rods and it's a lot of good that I've got to say about these rods. I swapped out a very expensive rod to, to use this rod. Um, so the good thing about these rods, and I've, I've noticed that a lot of guys don't quite understand how important that soft 
softest tip becomes. Not only when you're pitching um, and, and getting your baits out far or whatever, but when you're fighting a big fish. So, you know, to, to just emphasize on the soft tips that this rod does have, um, when, it, when you look at spinnerbait rods, um, you know, I've seen another 5 kg coming out where the guy, you know, if you speak to him, I know the guy was a very good friend of mine. If he said that my rod been hard and he was using a crankbait rod, had my rod been hard, I would have lost the fish. My previous PBE, which was a 4, just over 4, also a crankbait rod, had I been on a harder rod, I know I would have lost that fish because there was only one hook in the mouth. Mm. So, again, with this rod, when you get that soft tip, and the, the nice soft tip, not all the way, it's still got the power, but when you get that nice tip that this rod has, um, not only do you see your vibrations in the tip very nicely, it's not too hectic, but you still feel it very well, but when you're handling a big fish, when you're, when you're reeling a big fish two meters, like a six five, and she did this, I gained some ground on her, and then she says, no, I, I'm, I'm out of here, and she turns around, and then if your drag's not right, you're done, it's finished, it's clogged. She's going to snap you off or she's going to bend the hook open or whatever's going to happen. If you're not ready for her to turn around, then you're going to lose it as well. But with the soft tip, it obviously helps. You know, guys talk about this with frogging as well, and it becomes just as important when you've got a big fish on the line, is having that play in your rod is so important. This rod, I absolutely love this rod. It pitches like a dream. It, uh, it catches big fish clearly. <laughs> As previous fish were all on this road as well. Gets them to the boat, huh? Um, yeah, it gets them there, you know, you can, and it's, it's got the power for it, clearly. Um, you know, this is, this is now after my initial review that, that we did. Um, I'm, still, I'm still on the same level with this road. Plus, it's got a five year warranty. If, a, if I hook another one and I do it wrong and I snap the rod, well, let's come have a chat to Brian and get a new one. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's it. Well, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, I don't know if there's anything else of value you can add to the viewers out there, but um, guys, yeah, in a nutshell, I'm glad that you're happy with uh, the Pesca Pro Series Chatterbait Rod. It pairs up with a jackhammer. I'm, 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 I'm extremely works. happy that it you, works. that you, yeah, that you've been catching such huge fish on it. And I mean, that's just an absolute giant of a PB. So, congrats from us um, as well. Thank you. And uh, I'm sure from everybody else that's watching out there, that's fantastic. And thank you for coming through, and sharing and showing, you know, um, your experience and and what you've done. And it's just basically going to help all of us go out there and catch more fish. You know, I need to now experiment as well because I was throwing. I was this bait chair, but I was using the black blue laminate, and now I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, I should have mixed it up a bit more instead of giving the same same thing, you know, for those fish to look at all the time. So maybe there's an option as well where, you know, I need to start tinkering and, and having a look because I'll normally throw the green pumpkin with the green pumpkin and the black blue with the black blue. Um, those are my two favorite favorite combinations. Um, Just, it's also it's also triggers, right? So. Yes. On, a, on a bait like this, you've got your you got your three triggers. You got your initial, you know, the movements of the bait. You know, then you've got your action as a second trigger, and mm. then you've got your skirt as a third trigger when the skirt fluffs up. So, you know, the thing was to always keep it natural, but add some triggers down the line. You know, we've got some good anglers in South Africa who add their things to the crankbaits. Some guys know about. So, on the opposite side just from reading up and guys I'm, I'm no professional this is all just tinkering and reading and interacting with guys in America and South Africa and talking on forums and things and a 565 <laughs> yeah yeah okay I'll brag about it a bit um, the green pumpkin I put the June bug trailer just to add another trigger to it because it's, it's all about creating those triggers with these baits you know we can all Steady guys can come past there and throw a chatterbait. It can happen, but if you can't get that one fish, that one lazy fish down there, the big one, to, to trigger it, then it's, it's, nothing's going to happen. It's going to be another boat that comes past. 100%. Excellent, Ed. All right. No, well, that's that's fantastic. Dude, like I say, thanks very much for sharing with us. I appreciate yeah. it. You're a good yeah. man. Thanks, sure. Dog. No, and I appreciate you bringing this tackle to the country. Good stuff. We will continue to bring awesome. it. We will continue to do so. And we'll try and continue to always keep the price as low as possible. Yeah. Wherever possible, we will We will continue to be committed to that. Yeah. So, thanks for your time, brother. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Thanks for listening, guys. Hope you go. Thanks, guys.